Merry Christmas, all. For Christmas this year, I won't be doing a Christmas video. I'm going to do something a little different. This is Peter. His Twitter, at CabooseCrazy. Peter was a younger member of the Thomas fandom, and a big fan of mine. He ran a Twitter account called Unlucky Tug Out of Context, posting random funny clips from videos, you know, a typical Out of Context account. Very unfortunately, in April of this year, Peter went in for heart surgery and, well, he didn't come out. Peter passed on April 18th, 2021. Before he passed, Peter DM'd me one day asking how many retweets for a redo of my old season's 14 and 15 review videos. As you all may know, those videos are absolute garbage. Cringy teenager me in total denial of how bad those seasons were, and my opinions on them have changed drastically. Peter passed soon after that. We hit the number of retweets I gave him after his passing, and I promised I'd make the video in his honor. It's very unfortunate you're not here to see this, Peter, but I made a promise, and I'm going to keep it. This video is dedicated to you. The Nitrogen Era of Thomas. Seasons 13 through 16. The first ever full CGI seasons of the show and what most consider the worst era of the whole franchise. This video is going to be more of a retrospective on this entire era of the show, more so than just seasons 14 and 15. I have barely revisited this era since it aired, and I have very little memory of what happens in a lot of these episodes. To accomplish this review, I've rewatched the top 5 episodes from each of my old review videos. These episodes include the following, Oh the Indignity, Henry's Health and Safety, Victor Says Yes, Charlie and Eddie, Jumping Joby Wood, Edward the Hero, Tree Trouble, Surprise Surprise, Henry's Happy Coal, and Stop That Bus. Clearly I thought these were the best of the best back then, so these must be pretty good representation of this era in my eyes. And I'm going to allow my thoughts on them to sort of represent this era as a whole for this video. Along for the ride are several unfortunate friends of mine that watch these with me in a Discord call. Oh shit, this looks. <laughs> I've recorded all our reactions and observations during this watching session for you to enjoy, and you can actually go view that in full on my second channel, The Lucky Tug. Beware though, because our language can be quite strong. Link in the description. So without further ado, let's dive into what many consider to be the worst era of Thomas. CGI Begins 2008 was a turbulent time to be a Thomas fan. The long-running show had been portrayed using the ever-loved model props on sets filmed behind cameras for 24 years at this point. Of course, as time went on, filming with props became expensive. And as many other shows had already done, the decision to switch to full CGI was made. Hit Entertainment, who owned Thomas at the time, had already started experimenting with CGI in 2007. In 2008, the show's 12th season aired, which was a unique hybrid season meshing models with CGI. Everything was still models on sets, but the faces were now animated with movie mouths, as well as all the people, animals, and other details. The CGI elements were provided by the Canadian animation company Nitrogen Studios, the same company that brought you the cinematic masterpiece Sausage Party. I distinctly remember season 12 looking impressive at the time. And yeah, for 2008, this looked pretty cool, but it has aged very badly, in my opinion, and the poor quality rushed writing of the episodes does not help. I think most people just choose to forget this weird-ass hybrid season exists. Originally the plan was that Thomas was to go on for a few more years in this hybrid format, but at some point along the way, someone made the decision to just go full CGI. 2009 saw the show's 13th season, the world's first ever exposure to Thomas as a full CGI train. Welcome to the Nitrogen Era. Just like season 12, the CGI animation was provided by Nitrogen Studios, hence the era's name, as well as changing the overall visual medium 
a lot of other little changes were made, including gaining a full voice cast. For the first time, all the characters now spoke with their own individual voices instead of the narrator voicing everyone. The episode lengths were changed to be a little bit longer, 8 minutes and 45 seconds to be precise, or an even 11 minutes once you add on the intro and the engine roll call song at the end. This era went on for four seasons, seasons 13, 14, 15, and 16, as well as four movies, which are not going to be a part of this discussion. We're focusing specifically on the episodes here. I've done reviews of all the movies in my ranking video if you'd like to know my thoughts on those. The Nitrogen Era saw its end when Mattel purchased the Thomas brand in 2012. When Mattel stepped in, they were keen on making some changes to the show's format, which to their credit were all for the better. Nitrogen's contract had ended, and they signed on a new animation company called Arc Productions. They demoted the show's head writer Sharon Miller in favor of a new writing team made up of former Thomas alumni, headed by Andrew Brenner. The show then entered its renaissance phase. The Renaissance, as some have dubbed it. The Nitrogen era of Thomas was short-lived, but boy was it hated. And it still is. Oh, this sucks. Before I go into why this era is so hated, I want to go over some things I found myself actually appreciating on this latest rewatch. The animation isn't terrible. Compared to other kid shows, I think Thomas's animation, even in its early years, was pretty high quality in comparison to its competition. I don't think it's aged the best. The episodes we're looking at here are only 10 years old, and some of the shots are not that appealing. Like, ugh, those grass textures are just awful. I don't like how some of the sets look, with all that dead space between the tracks, and especially with those thick-ass rails. Seriously, why are the rails so thick? That's something they never fix, it's always bugged me. And I hate how often they reuse the same angles of the engines over and over and over again. But, none of this feels cheap. The engines all feel like they have some weight to them, and there's some nice subtleties in their movements. I really like the extra details, like Thomas's working pistons in his undercarriage, something that just wasn't possible with the props. And then sometimes you'll get these crazy impressive shots out of nowhere that just make you go, wow. There was a clear effort here. None of this feels like quickly made crap, of which is so common to kid shows of today. As the seasons go on, you can tell they started having a bit more fun with what assets they used in scenes. I noticed the train consists got a lot more interesting as we watched, with much more diverse rolling stock. Henry pulls like the funnest train ever in the opening of one of the episodes, with all these obscure wagons. Oh, yeah. never seen that again. Look at that fun train, look at those fun trains, yeah, look at that wagon! That's fun. Got all the wagons. Nice! That's a cool train, man. That kind of background eye candy is just neat. The animation on the humans gets a lot better too over time, especially on Sir Topham Hatt and his mother. The movements are borderline hilarious at times. I definitely prefer arc stuff over Nitrogen in general because I think those episodes had much better direction and lighting, but I'll give Nitrogen props at least for their effort. None of this holds a candle to the model stuff though, but I think that goes without saying. The score slaps. I don't know what happened here, but composer Robert Hartshorn really stepped up his game when the CGI stuff started. I'm sorry, I'm sure people will disagree with me on this, but I am not a fan of his music for the later model stuff. It's not all bad, but he was so obsessed with horns, it all sounds like sad tuba music. I just can't stand it sometimes. I'm sorry, but this ain't good. This sucks. Perhaps Hit wanted a new flavor of music for the CGI stuff, or maybe they allowed Hartshorn more creative freedom, I don't know. But hot damn, some of these themes in these episodes are serious bops. The main theme used in Charlie and Eddie is like seriously awesome. I unironically really like some of these. These are great. And Hartshorn's game only got better as the show continued into the Renaissance period. Subtle humor. There's some little bits of background humor to be found in these episodes, like the pump truck gag in the Birdie episode, or Sir Topham Hatt being visibly afraid of his mother when she gets angry. Little things like that appear throughout some of these. Not all, but some. And I think that adds a little bit of charm to what are overall very, very boring episodes. 
There are some bizarre bits of humor that I don't fully get. Like this weird boss gag. That's right, boss. <gasps> boss? What? What? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> what even happened? I I'm not sure what the joke was there, but I guess it's better than it just being a boring exposition scene, right? But what I overall appreciate the most of this era was the very clear attempt to keep this as consistent with the model series as possible. Keeping a narrator for one, which is so tied to Thomas's identity, and the decision to replicate all the models as closely to the props as possible. A lot of shows, when they made the CGI switch, changed the look of the characters for entirely no good reason. They didn't do that here, and I want to say that was an intentional decision not to alienate the audience so much. Thomas is so famous for being a show filmed with model trains, and Hit didn't want to stray too far from that. It would have been very jarring for a kid watching the model episodes in 2009 to suddenly be presented with a new Thomas that looks nothing like what came before. Early CGI Thomas replicated the model era as closely as they could, going even as far as keeping the intro consistent with the exact same shots. They do venture off and use the CGI medium to its full advantage in later years, but the decision to keep it consistent at the start is one I actually really respect in retrospect. They very much tried to keep it the same show, just in a new medium. Compared to how Mattel handled things when they ventured off into a new medium, I respect the way Hit handled things a hell of a lot more. I remember when this era first started coming out, it was kind of exciting for some fans. I was excited. It was a new version of Thomas that looked promising. It was very fun hearing all the characters talk with their own voices for the first time, and seeing more dynamic camera angles that weren't possible with the props before. In a lot of ways, Hit seemed to take the correct steps in taking Thomas into the world of CGI. Thomas's popularity was at an all-time high at this point in time, with great marketing and quality merchandise in every store. Everything seemed to be going so great for it. So, why is this era so hated? Lazy writing. The biggest problem with the nitrogen era of Thomas was absolutely, undeniably, 100% without argument, the writing. The lazy, formulaic, bland, awful, clearly the writer does not give a shit what they are putting to paper because they see it as just a dumb kid show kind of writing. All these episodes are exactly the same. Every episode starts the f***ing same. <laughs> Yeah, it really does. You're so right. <laughs> Just start the episode. Stop showing me all the trains going. Literally all of these start the same way. <laughs> they all follow the same exact formula to a T. Allow me to explain. Episode starts with some filler intro that pointlessly explains how the engines are happy to be on the Fat Controller's Railway. On the island of Sodor, all the engines are proud to work for the Fat Controller's Railway. On the island of Sodor, the engines like to puff and huff their hardest. On the island of Sodor, all the engines are busy engines. Or it needlessly introduced the main character of the episode in a montage made up of stock footage from other episodes. Gordon is the grandest engine on Sodor. Edward is a grand old engine. Bertie the bus rolls along the roads. A character of authority, usually Sir Topham Hatt, explains what is happening today and assigns a job to the story's main character. Sometimes the main character has another goal in mind they'd like to accomplish that isn't the job they were assigned. I'd like to be a hero. But he wanted to be the best. I'm sure I can chuff on normal coal. I'm sure I can bring a party here to my friends. The main character goes off to do their job, but in a hurry to get the job done, they make a mistake. Either caused by them being focused on the other goal they had in mind, or from them being scared of something. They either don't notice, or they do notice and don't care. They make a second mistake that's a little worse than the previous one. Again, they don't notice or don't care. They make the big bad third mistake that ruins the job they were assigned. Sir Topham Hatt or the character of authority is conveniently present for this third mistake and reprimands the main character. 
Edward felt terrible. Victor felt terrible. Thomas felt terrible. Main character decides to shape up and fixes all three mistakes they made in some sort of montage showing them helping their friends or whatever. The day is saved, the job is finished, and the main character achieves the alternative goal they wanted at the beginning. Everyone is f***ing happy and laughs and whistles while the camera pans out or holds on the character's face as the narrator says how happy they are. Edward the hero smiled and smiled. And even the fat controller smiled. So that even devious Diesel smiled. <laughs> yeah. Literally all these episodes are the goddamn same. Every single episode from this era is exactly the same. They just literally like copied and pasted every single episode script Yep. and made like four f***ing seasons out of it. The later model seasons were not great, but even they didn't stick to the same formula all the time. The characters acted like themselves sometimes and had their share of little moments. Percy, Percy, I think the statue is of me. Really, Thomas, go on, Percy, that's nice. How they quickly forgot who these characters are when CGI started is just so baffling to me. The personalities and the designs of the characters play no part at all in the type of stories that they are involved in. And that's how we get such dumb episode plots like Sir Topham Hatt sending his Top Link Express tender engine to work at a f***ing garbage dump. Let me take my expensive Express engine to go work on the garbage dump. Bro, <laughs> what the f***? There was no thought put into any of these. And because they are so formulaic, you lose interest immediately. No matter how promising the episode starts out, they always, always devolve into the same three strikes formula crap and become instantly boring. Seriously, can you name me a single episode from this era that doesn't use this formula? You can't, because it doesn't exist. Of the ones we rewatched, the most decent episode of the bunch was Edward the Hero because it broke new ground by having Edward helping three people instead of making three mistakes. It's still boring, predictable paste, but it's a little truer to Edward's character, so it, I don't know, it kind of worked? Kinda? I think this is the best one we've seen. Like, yeah. it's not good. Yeah, it's like almost frustratingly almost not crap. The writing is undeniably the killing factor of this entire era, and that's why it sucks. That's why it's hated. All these episodes feel like they were written by the same person in a single night. And I think there's probably some truth to that, considering it was the same writer of half the episodes every season. It's a shame the writing was so terrible during this time because everything else seemed to be bringing their A-game. The animation was pretty promising, the new voice actors were doing a fine job, Robert Hartshorn pumped out a pretty banger score, and the marketing team were working wonders. Tom was out of presence in every store. Knowing just how good all these other elements were just makes me dislike this whole era even more. We just can't win. I do not enjoy any of these episodes. This isn't like Big World Big Adventures where it's like 90% offensive garbage and then there's a gem hidden somewhere in the sludge. No, it's just all mediocre crap here. Speaking of Wubba, I think that's a brilliant segue into the next topic. Is this truly the worst era? So let's address the big elephant in the room that everyone watching is probably wondering. Now that we've seen what Thomas has become in 2021, is this era truly the worst of the whole franchise? Is the Nitrogen era worse than Bwaba or the reboot? Okay, now let me ask you guys this question. Is this better than Bwaba? No. 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 From, uh, from what I've seen, um, I'm gonna say no. When I posed this question to the group, they all pretty unanimously said, no, this is the worst. Then we continued to discuss it, and interestingly, everyone's views started to shift a bit. Let me ask a follow-up question to this now. Is a better written episode where Thomas does things that a train shouldn't be doing, is that better than a really, really boring episode where trains are trains? I'm not saying this is realistic or anything, but like I'm saying like they still operate like trains. But then like look at like All Engines Go where they're actually like jumping off the tracks and not being trains. Like, which is worse? Which would you rather be watching? Okay. This is better just on the aspect it feels more consistent with the rest of the series. 
I don't want to say respect because that's I feel like that's giving it too much credit, but I can at least respect this particular era for at least knowing its identity. I can push through watching the nitrogen era. I can't I can't watch more than 10 seconds of all engines go without it, like wanting to turn that shit off. I'm very conflicted about this because I want to I want to just go out and say like these people at least understood like the base concept of Thomas. These people understood what the appeal like, of Thomas was. Yeah, they um, yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. I'm I'm watching Thomas when I'm watching this. It sucks, but I'm watching Thomas characters be Thomas characters. Thomas is Thomas in this. Here's where I stand on this debate. I wholeheartedly think Bwaba is worse. The Nitrogen Era is lazy, and no one on the writing team cared, and the characters don't really feel like the characters, and it's very uninteresting. But it outweighs Bwaba by a slight margin. Why? The Nitrogen Era's biggest flaw was its lazy writing. But everything else was to a pretty decent standard. Bwaba, however, isn't Thomas. And the All Engines Go reboot even more so. The thing is, All Engines Go isn't trying to be Thomas. All Engines Go is trying to be Paw Patrol. No different than any other kid show out there today. They just slap the Thomas branding on it because it's marketable. That's it. Those are both crappy, generic, wannabe Paw Patrol cartoons with Thomas's skin on top of them. They're being paraded as Thomas when they very clearly aren't. And anyone with an IQ of 10 could tell you that. As a fan, it hurts more to see Thomas doing wacky, stupid cartoon stuff that a train should not be doing than to see him in a boring, formulaic episode, but still as a train doing train things, if that makes sense. Would you rather watch a boring baby show or a baby show that makes you want to die? Boring baby show. Boring. So by that, I mean, by that alone, so Nitrogen go. is better than blah, blah. <laughs> they are both bad in two different ways. The Nitrogen era was bad because it was more so disappointing. It showed promise, but was let down by bad elements. Whereas Bwaba was just a bad idea from the start, and went way too far in a comical, cartoony direction. The Nitrogen era, while borderline unwatchable, never threw away its core characters and said they weren't important anymore, or ever deterred from the quaint, charming English countryside storybook setting or tried to make Thomas be anything else but a train. Thomas never does Tai Chi, or jumps off the tracks, or turns into an elephant, or a rocket ship in a Nitrogen episode. Sodor is still Sodor. Yeah. It's like, a, yeah. it feels like a real place. Misty Island doesn't, Misty Island doesn't count. Sodor <laughs> feels like a real place in like the Nitrogen era. In Blubba, it's just like, oh, Western town next to Giant Mountain, next there to Minecart Cave. A- There is a sense of restraint that I don't see in the newer stuff. This era, to an extent, knew what it was doing. It understood the core appeal of the show. It was just written abysmally. This is Thomas at the most baseline, laziest, basic, simplistic, stripped down, blandest, still counts as Thomas by technicality level possible, but it's still Thomas. It's still the same world, with the same characters doing train things and acting like how trains should act. And while the writing department did not give a fuck, everyone in every other department did. And I can appreciate their efforts. I think it ultimately comes down to what you prefer as a fan, honestly. Would you rather a really shitty season that is nothing like Thomas, with a couple decent episodes in it? Or a whole season that is lazy and mediocre, but still embraces the core concept of what the show is. The appeal of this series is they're trains that operate in a semi-realistic manner. I feel like the issue with All Engines Go is that it saw the, the idea of working with semi-realistic trains as a limitation and not the, the core of what the show is. It's a hard question to answer. But ultimately, I think I'd rather a season that sucks, but still stays true to what the show is about. At least the trains are still, you know, trains in this. The whole goddamn core appeal of the franchise. My final thoughts are that the Nitrogen Era is awful. It's horribly written. I I I have no desire to rewatch it again, but Thomas still had his identity here. They still understood what the f*** a train was, to an extent. And they weren't flying off the tracks. 
to to a weird extent, I think this is still better than anything Blubba did. I think that both both are shit, and we should be playing Rage Shadow Legends instead. This video is sponsored by Rage Shadow Legends. And also Raycon earbuds and Nord VPN. Are you still are you still recording? Yeah. As much of a letdown the Nitrogen Era was, I have to admit that revisiting it after all this time has been a little bit of a nostalgia trip for me, because it has been a good while since I even thought about rewatching these crappy episodes. Why would anyone want to revisit something that reminds them of their cringe teenager years, right? Though it was pretty fun to rewatch these eps and be delighted to find that there are some nice things in them. I'll never say that these seasons are underappreciated, because they're absolutely not and they deserve the flack they've gotten over the years, but they could be worse. Merry Christmas, everyone, and Merry Christmas to you, Peter. May you continue to rest in peace. I'll see you all in 2022.